went to see a Sherlock Holmes play in Minneapolis last summer, and we were discussing an intermission, and, and uh, you said, oh, I can write a really good Sherlock Holmes play. Well, I said, prove so. it. I don't think it's terribly complicated to, to write Sherlock Holmes. I mean, occasionally uh, one might write the wrong word or phrase, and then you have to check it and say, oh, well, that wouldn't have been current, or that's just not an idiom that Holmes would have uh, employed. But I've always found it fairly easy to fall into a rhythm, either a character rhythm or the rhythm of another writer, you know, because I've adapted lots of stuff. What is hard is um, taking what is essentially um, a, a novel or, or fiction approach. You know, you're reading a story off a page, which translates beautifully onto film, but doesn't always translate as easily to the stage. So, I mean, would you say it's fair that if you look at the old William Gillette, Sherlock Holmes, and, and by extension, I guess, Stephen's play, that they don't function with the same speed and geographic sweep as most of Conan Doyle's stories. You know, in any given short story, you know, it's at Baker Street and train stations and the Thames and out to the countryside and, you know... The maybe, moors. Yeah, the, the moors and, and a bank vault and the sewers. Uh, it's very cinematic that way and, you know, in keeping with the way Victorian uh, fiction was. But you really can't do a lot of that on stage. At least you couldn't at the turn of the last century. So that's why the, um, the final adventure, the final problem, um, uh, I, I think feels more like here's a scene, and here's a scene, and here's a scene, and here's our last scene. Because that's the way you would have done it in 1901. But we have a lot of stage techniques that allow us to do lots of fun stuff with this one that I think will make it feel a lot different from other Sherlock Holmes's. In an odd way, there's a lot of technology to make it look very light on its feet. So that at no one point in the production, hopefully, will the audience say, my God, that's a lot of scenery. But we'll get from place to place with, with uh, uh, a lot of flavor and a lot of alacrity. It's, it's designed brilliantly by John Azell. So yeah, it's gorgeous. can't wait to, uh, to do that. But it's quite a different look than the last Sherlock Holmes play. It's quite a different look from the Jekyll and Hyde we did together. Well, one of the interesting things I think about um, uh, the, the grammar of stage is that, say, 110 years ago, they would have tried so hard to make everything real. Real fire and real smoke and real running water so that you could believe in the gas works and believe in 221 B Baker Street. You know, because movies do it so well, on stage we can now do things that, say, the Victorians and the Tardians would have said, oh, why would we do that? You know, we can put up the numbers 221B and our audience, which is, you know, we learn from symbols and signs and, and indexes and codes, they'll go, oh, it's Baker Street. So we don't have to give them as much to say, oh, here we are at Baker Street. And sometimes all you need is, you know, the sound of the river. And it's like, oh, well, we must be somewhere near the river.